what's good we back with another video going over the 3d object floating effect make sure you check the links in the description down below i got this diamond 3d model from cgtrader.com link is in the description i got the texture for it from freepex.com make sure you check the links we're gonna go over all that today we started we're gonna go into the effects tab i actually got the fusing composition saved as a favorite so i'm gonna grab it and drop it down i'm gonna leave it at the default which my default is Control d i like Control D is five seconds. It's good enough for this. We're actually gonna go into Fusion. We got a blank composition. We're gonna go through here. After you get your, your 3D model downloaded, 3D models that, that I know of that Fusion recognizes is OBJ and FBX files or FBX scenes, I think they are. So once you get one of those downloaded, we're gonna go into Fusion. We're gonna import FBX scene. Go to wherever your save file is and here, I got one of each. I got OBJ and FBX. I'm gonna go to FBX, open. It's gonna give you a little menu here. Gonna hit OK. So we bring you up these nodes. Now these are actually supposed to be the, the texture material, I think. Yeah, these are texture material for the plane. And this is basically just a blank material that you can use if you want to. We're actually gonna delete all that. Assuming that you're following me with the diamond. Delete, 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 delete. Delete. We don't need none of those. We just need a cylinder and a merge node, and we need to render the 3D object out. So we can go over here to this toolbar, hit render. You have 3D renderer, and you can connect it to the media out in order to be able to view it, or you can leave it disconnected and hit two on the keyboard, and you'll see you have nothing there. I'm gonna go here you know, over the merge node, hit one on the keyboard. And we're going to right click and scale to fit. And now you see your big old gigantic diamond. I'm going to click on the cylinder and actually go into the inspector tab. On the transform, we'll go down here and we're going to scale it down, make it a lot smaller. Now you can actually see it in your render. About right here or so. I'm going to hit right click in the first viewer, scale to fit again so we can actually see it. And actually, it's going to be, I think it's still too big. So we're going to scale it down some more. Then we'll go back up here to the Y axis and move it up. As you can see, it's still just as big as the frame. So we're going to scale it on down some more and you can just adjust it with the Y axis. Now we're going to hit control space bar. We're going to type in MAT and we're going to look for replacement, mater replace material 3D. Now we're going to go back into the tools and we're going to type in KAS. It's the kick ass shaders that you download from reactor. I'm going to select the Chrome and hit add. It's going to bring up a little group here and you just take the output of that group and connect it to the replacement material. And that's your diamond texture. Now you can leave it like that if you want to, if you can double click in this little group here and go environment, hit one on the keyboard. That's the image that's actually inside of the diamond, which is basically like a world texture or whatever. If you don't want that, you can download a free texture from the free, I think it's freepex.com. I'll leave a link to, to the one I use and to the diamond that I use in the description. And you're basically gonna replace it. So we're gonna go in here, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna go to Kick-Ass uh, Parkland Loader. Go to the Inspector tab and hit Browse. And then we're gonna browse to where we get the texture downloaded. These here are actually the files that come with the Kick-Ass shaders. We're not gonna use those. And this is the one I downloaded, the low poly background. I'm going to click on this and open. It's going to replace it. It's a little bit cartoony. Like there are other ones. It's just the one I downloaded for the, this, this, this demonstration. I'm going to go ahead and actually close this group out. And you notice it's not really, not too sharp. Like if you go into merge 3d on Spectre tab one, scale to fit once again, you can, if you hold down, if you click in the mouse button and right click, you can move around 3d space. You can see the diamond texture. If you want to actually sharpen it a little bit, I like the render node, control space, type in sharpen. You're gonna click the first one and you can crank up the sharpness amount. You get a little bit of a extra tech. Actually, you gotta go in here and hit two on the keyboard. I don't go up too high and go about right, about right there. And you actually can you crank up a little bit more and then drop down the blend a little bit. And then give you a little bit, little, just not a big improvement, but it's a little slight, in, slight improvements. Now, if you want to, just for the purpose of staying organized, you can highlight all these nodes. Go into your toolbar and type in under. You can get an underlay, and it's just going to group all your nodes into one group. For this effect to work, just like many other effects, you're going to have to mask out your subject. I use a magic mask and just a kind of a quick update. 
if you go into magic if you go into color page hit person i'm gonna do better and draw a line down your subject you get the it with the mask overlay and then i'm gonna track back and forth now my previous video where i talked about the magic mask i will go through and make my extra corrections like this little part of his coat here that it doesn't catch i mean you know i was slight i will select it and add it and then i will retract the whole subject again but you don't have to do that you can just kind of navigate with the arrow keys say for instance go through here and you want to add this little piece of coat i'm getting slight actually i'm gonna zoom in a little bit now, you have to, now the whole code is selected instead of retracking it i always thought you had to retract and get the green mark for each one of your uh strokes in order to get a good track actually all you had to do was just leave it as it is and just go from once you as you navigate frame by frame and just make another selection it will just save that selection for that frame so all you need is one good track and then just select the strokes through there now once you got your subject masked out and got your alpha channel you want to render it so it won't lose the alpha channel and also is less taxing on your computer so you right click render in place you can change codec to dnhr and then type change it to dnhr hq hit render and that will actually render out your background with render out your subject with an alpha background once it's done rendering everything place that in your media pool and you're gonna go back into fusion and then we're gonna bring in the footage we're gonna use and we're gonna bring in the mass clip you're gonna close the media pool out over here in the toolbar, we're going to get a 3D node, merge node, and a render node. Actually, not 3D node, I'm sorry, this is the image plane node. Just for organization purposes, we're going to have like media 2, type in mask, so we know that's the mask clip. We're going to take the output of it and connect it to the green input. And then the media 1, we're going to connect it to media out. It's going to give us our clip. And we're going to take the render node here and connect it to the output of the media one and it's going to give us a merge and then you got your little 3d subject so if you go in here and hit on the merge 3d2 hit one on the keyboard to bring in the first view you see a little 3d man and you hit play and play out now of course they're not the same size we're actually going to the image plane going to the transform on the expector and we're going to scale it up hold control zoom back out zoom back in there we go you just want to make sure they are the exact same scale size now we got that done we're going to take the output of your merge from your original merge from the cylinder and connect it to the merge too and that's going to give you your diamond now it's a little bit too big for my taste we can go back over here there we go i so say you can move around 3d space by clicking in the mouse button and right clicking and we're actually going to scale the diamond down just a little bit more move it back up on the x-axis again and also move it back on the Z axis. Now we're gonna go into the first frame of your clip and you're gonna hit these, you're gonna hit these keyframes for the X, Y, and Z axis. And basically just gonna animate the, the object around your subject. So basically gonna go over there for so many frames. I'm gonna go to 10 frames for the first one. And I'm gonna move up on the Z axis. Now if you hold, if you just click in the mouse button, you can just, you can move around just like normal. Go a little bit back. Then I'm gonna go to like frame 20. And I'm gonna move across on the x-axis. And as you're doing these keyframes, you'll see the little actually well, it went way too far. You will see this little path here showing the path of your animation. So then you want to just basically repeat that throughout the animation. You basically just want to repeat that. Yeah. And then you just want to repeat going around in a circle. <laughs> Now, when you're done, actually keyframing, I'm just gonna move this down. Give me a little more real estate. You know, some of my keyframes, the path is actually cutting through the subject. You can actually go through and actually move those around. Reason like these. Let's say, for instance, like this here, you can just move up, click on the cylinder, click on the frame, you can move it around. And basically, you, you can move it at these little access points here, these little notches. Now, you notice this is real choppy, just kind of moving from angle to angle. To fix that, you're just going to make sure the center is highlighted. Go into spline, 
We go up here and click on cylinder. Hit zoom to fit. Select all. And of course, you know by now, it is to smooth. And once it's moved out, get a lot better of an animation. And some of them are still a little choppy, like right here. It's moving around and stuff, but it's all right for the demonstration. And to get more diamonds floating around your subject, you're going to go in here and select the merge 3D node. You're going to select it and then go into your toolbar and type in duplicate. You're going to get the duplicate 3D. Make sure it's attached. You're going to hit one of the keyboard for it. Or you actually can leave, leave it in the merge node, the merge node two, once connected to your footage. Then go into that, highlight that merge 3D, I mean that duplicate 3D. And go in here and like number of copies, gonna hit, I'm gonna hit five. And I think the more, like this, this 3D model is not that extensive. So the more copies you have, the more detail your model is, the heavier it will be on your computer. And you can go into the time offset. Actually, I'm gonna leave the offset alone. And we're gonna hit X offset. And then we're gonna go down here. And move this. I'm gonna move that and kind of move that Y. Move the X back down and kind of basically curve it around. So you zoom out, you see it curves around the subject now. And the Z axis make them go out further and basically just, just circle around. Back into the cylinder and on the rotation, so you can turn, you can hit like the uh, X axis and then hit modify width, add them curves, go into the modifier, change it to easing. You can use set as none as you want to or add an animation. Basically just have the diamonds kind of rotate around and go back into the cylinder. Do the same thing with Y axis. And this is just have the, the diamonds rotating around individually as they rotate around your subject. Oh yeah, change it to duration as well. Go back into the Z axis, change it from tra uh, transition to duration. Now you see the diamonds actually moving around and rotating as they circle your subject. If you like today's video, make sure you hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm, help your boy out and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I also want to thank everybody who's been rocking with me in the community tab. Y'all the real ones. I appreciate you. My schedule's been kind of a little off here lately because I've been doing some client work and also trying to learn more about this 3D stuff. I was actually messing around in Blender for a little while. I got more videos to come. I appreciate you watching and I'll see y'all next time.